My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is the best travel case for your camera gear. Let's go. It's 2021, and a lot of people are going to cover 2020, but I'm going to say Happy New Year. Let's move on. In some of my videos, you can see how much I travel. That's why I started the series Filmmaking Travel Tips, to help you out because traveling can be a pain when you have a bunch of film equipment to bring along. So if you're starting out, check out the videos I've done or any videos online. Let other people who have made mistakes along the way help you get started. You'll still make mistakes, but a lot can be prevented. How to travel with equipment will probably be the number one question. I've covered this before, but things change along the way. I used to carry everything, literally everything, but as my shooting style evolved along with my workflow, I really was able to limit how much stuff I needed to bring to a shoot. I recently got back from Yellowstone. And when I was there, I obviously had a camera case I travel with for my main equipment. And I thought I've never done a video on something I use all the time and that I highly recommend. So that's what this video will be about. I won't cover everything, but I wanna highlight what makes this case worth the purchase. By the way, I still carry a backpack when I travel. This case was purchased to be a checked bag that I'll go under the plane and carry the majority of my equipment. Let me show you what I have. Just kidding, this is actually really light. This is the Temba Air Case Attaché 3220. Super tough and a durable case. This case and I have been through a lot together. We've seen snow. We've been through the rain. And don't forget some blistering heat. And my equipment still came out on top. It's seen better days on the exterior, which will happen. We all know airline baggage doesn't always get special treatment. It's going to get tossed around at some point. It doesn't really matter though, as long as everything on the inside stays safe. I really have no idea what happened with these claw marks. If something was trying to get inside, it failed. Okay, let me set this down. As for the inside, you'll get a bunch of dividers and this case can pack some equipment. You really have a lot of room to play with. I was going to show you my equipment, but there's not much to show. I have most of the dividers pulled out and have strategically placed foam that supports my lights, stands, drives, my drone when I need it. Then I have other smaller cases that hold audio gear, cables, etc. It really all depends on what you want to haul. At times I've used it for my cameras and lenses. It just depends. What's important is you can really customize it in so many ways. Now let's talk about the bag itself and how it protects your gear. Timba calls this their air case. Similar cases that we're all aware of is something like a hard case. One main difference is the weight. Timba cases like I showed are usually lighter than the plastic cases. Why is that important? Weight limits for checked bags. Most of the time it's 50 pounds and you don't want a chunk of that weight to come from the actual bag instead of your equipment. I tend to go over the 50 pounds because if you fly a lot, you really should get on a point or rewards program if you're able to continuously fly on the same airline. I fly so much with Delta, I rack up those sky miles and I can acquire perks like an additional 20 pounds on a checked bag, which I take advantage of. Light and strong is what you want in a case and being lighter doesn't have to mean weak. Even in their advertising, Timba claims their case can withstand 400 pounds stacked on top. But can you really trust the toughness in an advertisement? People want to talk that talk in reality. You have not seen me in action. You think the come up comes overnight. You ain't behind the scenes. Trust me, these things don't just happen. No shade of Gerald, but G's don't come easy when you try to eat up producing and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign, but excuse me, I can't help myself. I'm just laughing. Hey, you try to cut out a piece of my pie. And I asked you politely, what's it that you offer me? Yeah, I produce. You know, while filming this segment, an audience developed and they were rooting for the bag. Go figure. I call it a draw, but I was the only one bleeding at the end. As for the interior, it has a patented layer construction which will also absorb and disperse impacts that you don't find in a typical hard case. There is one thing I do wanna mention about certain hard cases I've previously owned and my experience using them when traveling, especially at the airport. Checking my bag was never really an issue, but it seemed to always draw attention. 
I'm sure because of what people do carry in hard cases. So an airline might wanna know what's inside. On multiple occasions, just waiting at baggage claim, I had passengers come up to me when they saw me reaching for my hard case and started asking questions about what was inside. This happened too often. My point is certain brands of hard cases do say I have something valuable inside. When it comes to your camera gear, no one wants that. With the Temba Attaché Air Case, you get a stylish case that only the people that know the brand know what's inside. Otherwise, it looks like a suitcase. Since I've owned it, no one has come up to me asking any questions. Even checking in at the airport is a breeze. It's something to think about and should be on your list of pros and cons when deciding on a case to buy. Now let's get to the maneuvering. The extending handle is made from aircraft grade aluminum. It's one feature I like that I think gets overlooked. I actually have some pretty expensive suitcases that don't have a handle like this. With the weight you're going to have, the handle becomes really important. Even loading feels secure and you can get a good secure grip to help the process. The wheels are heavy duty as well. It would be nice to have four wheels to navigate through those back and forth lines at the airport, but that is a little nitpicking. Walking through the airport on two wheels is pretty effortless. What else can I say about this bag? Let me give you some of my final thoughts. There's a lot of cases on the market. I would think it's safe to assume a lot of bags can protect your stuff. The problem is it only takes one issue, one flaw, one bad situation to destroy your equipment, which can have serious consequences when traveling for a shoot. Theft can also be an issue and something to consider. I've mentioned this in another video, but that's why I don't put brand stickers all over my cases. If weight is going to be an issue for you when traveling, going with something that's lighter and stronger is a big selling point. There's a lot to consider when buying a case, and I don't recommend making that choice lightly. These are things you need to look at. Traveling has a lot of variables, and you want your experience to be as hassle-free as possible. Making the right decisions from packing, loading, flying, and safety can make traveling a fun experience. It might take some time to figure out all the details if you're just starting out. Keep that in mind, but I think you'll be making a good decision if you invest in Temba. Well, there you have it, the best travel case for your camera gear. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. But until then, comment below if you have any questions about my case or even about traveling. And as for this episode, it's a wrap.